this morning still. Give it up for our worship team this morning. Hey, we are excited about this morning and this word that's going to be brought today. It's by a special friend, a special guest here at Real Life Church. He's a friend of Pastor Vince's. He's a friend of mine, our staff. And we've had an opportunity several times to be able to sit down and have interview style conversation with him. But this morning, we're going to let him let it rip and let him preach. And he's going to bring a word because he did it in the 830. And I look forward to all that he's going to be able to bring for you, how God's going to speak through him as he already has. And I look forward to it because you may know or seen him, but maybe not know a lot of the story. He's going to share a little bit of that this morning, and I'll, I'll let him do that. But if you would do me the quick honor, the quick favor, and show a nice, warm, rowdy clap, shout, stand up, whatever works for you, and welcome this morning Pastor Ty Cotter of Care Center <laughs> Ministries. Well, hello, everybody. Um, it's a joy to be here. And we'll get set up here, and we'll be ready to roll. I'm uh, left-handed like Pastor Vince, so i got to keep the podium on this side, or I'll just be stuck over here, you know, so i got to move around a little bit for y'all. Um, anyway, I'm glad to be here. Um, y'all are like me. You like a little more sleep than the 830 crowd. And uh, we're going to get really get into it in just a second. I wanted to say uh, again thanks to Pastor Vince for uh, giving me the opportunity to preach to his sheep this morning, right, to, to be a part of his congregation and to give a word to you all today. And uh, I've been real grateful to Pastor Vince and our relationship we've had through all these years and really just a real life church. I see so many faces that I've grown to know and love throughout the years. And uh, it's been neat to see uh, churches and, and ministry in the same area, uh, loving and serving one another like mine and Pastor Vince's relationship. Amen. So uh, just a big deal. And so I want to say thank you uh, to everybody that's ever helped us or been a blessing to us. And we hope that we've been likewise to you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray first. So Lord, we just ask you today to clear our minds and hearts. Lord, I pray that for everyone in the room, God, myself including, Lord, the busyness and, and the distractions, Lord, I, I pray them uh, just away right now in Jesus' name. I pray that we're able to focus on you, God, that the world stop just for a moment, God, so that you can speak to us in this very moment. Lord, we're listening. Our ears are in tune. In Jesus' name, amen. So... Uh, with that being said, we're going to be talking about strongholds today. And so to me, where I come from, we're kind of on the front lines, if you will, of addiction uh, and alcoholism. And so every day uh, is, is a new day. We, we have a lot of different things that we face and that we minister to and that we uh, uh, you know, deal with for each individual. It's a little different. But I get to see uh, strongholds at a, at a bit stronger or deeper degree than most. Um, and if anybody has a family member or a loved one in addiction, you kind of know what I'm talking about. And so, uh, I mean, just this year, I've lost two close friends uh, from murder, both in, in their addiction, and another one took his own life. And, and so we see this, and that's just this year. I can go back and start naming off all the different men uh, that I'd seen come through and, and start getting a hold of this thing and really believing in Jesus and gaining that relationship. And then something happens along the way and there's tragedy. And so today we're going to talk about strongholds because maybe your stronghold is not an addiction of such. Maybe it's something different. And so Today, is, is, I want you to be reminded that it's anything that captivates your thoughts or actions. It's a mindset, right, that, that holds you back or hinders you from growth. We'll say it like this. Anything that competes with Jesus in your life could be considered a stronghold. And so with that being said, a common stronghold, it could be anger, holding you back from being free or walking out the fullness of what God has. It could be pride. It could be jealousy. It could be pornography. It could be whatever is in the way of you getting the fullness of what God has for you. Are you all with me today, church? All right. 
Let me get a hold of this water. I told the first group I drank so much I didn't know I can drink anymore. And here I am again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So back to the strongholds, just something that will cripple us. Something that will stop us from getting it. So I want you to think just for a minute, if you could think of one thing in your life that you know God wants you to remove or deal with that will bring you closer to him or closer to what he promised to you. Think about that for a minute, just the whole church. Just think about that. Do I have one thing in my life that I know is, is holding me back from obtaining what God says I will obtain? Okay, where you say, I know that I know that God told me if I deal with this one issue, he'll finally bring my marriage to where he said he'd bring it. You see, think about that for a minute with me. And we're going to read some scripture. And I really need us to see today that as we read this scripture, can we pull it up or we, okay, cool. I think we got it this time. So, all right. The, the devil had attacked our computer screen, first service, glad you weren't here. Um, we had to go to the manual edition, right? Go back to that old school, you know, you can't mess this one up, right? And so we got it on the screen, praise God. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. But listen, when we read this, I need you to see something. So it's the Apostle Paul, he's talking to a church, Amen. And so he's talking to a bunch of believers. So when we read this, just be reminded he's talking to believers. See, most of us think, oh, well, you struggle because you're not saved. Right. But the word says something different. So he says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, obviously there's a war going on. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Verse 5, we demolish arguments and pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to God. With that being said... It's obvious that the Apostle Paul is knowing that people in the church are struggling with strongholds and that they need to realize they're in a war and that we have to stand up and fight for what God has for us so that we could break free from the very thing that's exalting itself above God in our lives. You ask yourself, is, is God the center of your marriage? If it is not, I would implore you to take a look and maybe that there's a stronghold in the way that is not allowing that marriage to be centered on Christ. Y'all with me still? Come on, Jesus. We're going to get somewhere here. Listen, you just have to know that you're not alone. That, that we all, let me main point, or one of the main points is that Christians face strongholds. It's a reality, and we got to know that just because you're struggling with something doesn't mean someone next to you isn't either. And just know that the same freedom your brother or sister in Christ may have gotten in their stronghold is the same freedom that's available to you, right? It's the same power that lives in all of us. Let me say this, and I say this not to scare you, but we all believe in angels, right? The little, right? We're like, whoo, Right, angels, right? We believe in angels. That's an easy one, right? But do we believe in demons, right? Do we believe in the devil? Now, I don't think he has like a pitchfork and a tail and he's, you know, trying to get you under your bed. For those of y'all that ran to your bed at night when you were a kid, amen? Right, you take off or you jump and you're like, he can't, right? Because nothing can get you. Okay, I did that all the time, man. Uh, but anyway, he's not, that's not the kind of devil I'm talking about, right? Or the demon, you know, the guy off Lord of the Rings, you know, he doesn't look like that. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to get you lost on that deal. But I want to say that the battle of good and evil still exists right now. And that just because we are saved, right, we said a prayer, we gave our life to Christ, we said, I believe in you, we were restored back to God. 
And let me tell you that the enemy didn't quit when you got saved. He said, oh, man, okay, you got him back in relationship with you, but he is not going to have the marriage you promised. He will, he will not have the job you promised. He will not have the blessing that you've promised him because I'm going to get in the way. And I, I, I tell you this in a very upfront way because it's dangerous. Strongholds grow stronger, right, and they tear more things up the longer they go on. And we as a church have to believe that, wait a minute, we have to talk about the fact that we struggle with things and that we have to realize that we have the power to overcome all those struggles. We have to believe this. What is John 10.10? 10 says that the thief came to, y'all work with me on this one, ready? The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. Let's do that one more time. The 8.30 whooped you guys on that one. Ready? The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But what Jesus came to give life, I like saying abundantly, and life abundantly, amen? Came to give life and life abundantly. I think many times as Christians we stop at this life part. You know, we're saved, but now what? We're saved, but we still struggle. Listen, when I got saved, I'm telling you, I had a, a moment with God where, where Christ became real in my heart and something happened to me. I know it. And, and, and the moment it did, I still struggle with stuff. I was smoking, lying, manipulating, right? Still, everybody's like, hold up. When I got saved, you know, right? I mean, there's still stuff that needs to change, right? There's still stuff in you that needs to be broken off of you, right? To be who God called you to be. And so we, we don't want to stop there, but I just don't want anybody in the room to think, well, man, I'm struggling and I've been a Christian for five years and this isn't normal. I can't talk about it. Well, you can, because no man in the room can say he has not struggled with a stronghold or fought through one or going through one right now or fending one off as we speak. This is real, folks. Now, you may have your eternity secure, but your life here on earth is at stake, and it's real. Okay. Man, I hope we're in here. Uh, just very simply said, if, if the enemy can keep you from living the fullness of what God has for you, he will do it, okay? He will do it. If he can get in the way, he will do it. Again, I'm not saying this to scare you. We're going to get into another piece of this thing that will really encourage you. But, guys, we cannot act like this deal is not real. We can't just go on struggling because we don't want anybody to know that, that listen, man, we are broken people, man. And, and thank God for Jesus, right? Man, thank you, Lord. Let me tell you this. For every, for every promise that God has, the devil has a lie. You ready? For every promise that God has for you in your life, the devil has a lie. Y'all think back just for a moment. When you first got saved, if it was 20 years ago or last week, I want you to think for a minute. Have you ever had the time where all of a sudden you hear this little deal that says, you wasn't really saved? Right? That, that wasn't even real. You was just emotional. Right? You didn't even say the prayer right. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that. But you see what I'm saying? Anything he can say, right? It's like, oh, no, that, you, you definitely haven't changed. Right? You didn't meet Jesus at that moment. Listen, it's anything that God, notice how God promises you something. You're like, man, now, okay, that's Jesus right there. And all of a sudden you come up against some opposition because he's trying to stop you. I think as a church, we would come together, link arms as a family, and remind ourselves that we're all subject to, to, to fall in some manner, that we would be more encouraged to share with one another our struggles and help one another out of them. That we would share those things and be like, hey, look, this isn't embarrassing, man. I'm actually dying over here. I'm in a stronghold as if the enemy has got you in the chokehold and he, you're about to pass out. And the longer he holds, the less you breathe. 
You see? Man, it just breaks my heart to see people that fall in love with Jesus, but they don't got enough fight in them to get the blessing. Amen? And, and all we have to do is really believe what the word says about us, that we're really free. If John 8, 36 says it. Right, he's back. You see what I'm saying? We got to know, right? <laughs> Thank you for helping me out there. So at John 8, 36, but think about this for a minute. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Listen, the same power of Christ that made you right with God is the same power of Christ that can break a stronghold off of your life. Listen, you, let, me, let me say this. So it is, how do you say this? I'm trying to put this in words here. Sometimes when we get in that stronghold, we start thinking that, that nothing can get us out, right? We've tried it all. We, 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 we've tried, we set up this and we put this accountability in our lives and we've done all these things. I'm not saying you shouldn't take some accountability steps or set up some boundaries. What I'm getting at is we get lost in the moment and we start thinking that there's no way out of this thing. But if, but if Christ sets you free, he sets you free. And really all we have to do is believe, right, that the same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in me, right? And so if the same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in you, why can't you be free? I think it all boils down to what we believe. And we have to really appropriate the word of God into our lives and realize that we really are more than conquerors, right? That, that, that we are greater, that any, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We have to really believe these things, that, that it was gone. Listen, 17 years in addiction, and, and at the end of my addiction, IV meth user, and, and I remember... Uh, last year, this year I'll have 10 years, and, but last year it was at year nine, and I have to share this because what the enemy does is he always wants to do the setup. And, but, but if you really believe who you are and you really believe what he says, he has no power. That his little tricks don't work anymore. And so nine years, I'm, I'm going out of town several hours away with my son. My wife, for some reason, which is not normal, she's going out of town too, but the opposite direction. On a Saturday, I got nothing to do but be at this game. I'm leaving the game with my son. We stop at a gas station that no one knows me. We're out of town. I swing open the door, and lo and behold, a bag of meth. I said, I mean, my God, folks. When I was getting high, I was always looking for one of those, couldn't find one, right? All of a sudden, I'm clean nine years. Nine years. I'm looking. I, listen, and, and, and I ain't tripping, you know. I'm clean. I'm saved. It's uh, living a spirit-filled life, you know. I'm free. And so I'm tripping at the gas station, though. And so I don't know how it looked for anybody else in the gas station, but, man, I swung open that, I'm, like, where I was going to step. It was right there. I said, Oh! I said, man, it, there's meth on the ground. You know, my son, he doesn't know what, you know. And I'm like, he's nine. Or, no, God, he would get me. I hope you're not watching. He's 12. <laughs> <sighs> and I do that all the time. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. So, but listen, when I found this thing, I said, oh, no, buddy. Oh, man. So I pick it up. I'm like, I jump out of the car. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> You know, and I'm at a gas station, there's people around, right? And I'm thinking, oh, boy, what is this? This is crazy, man. And, you know, you got to take a picture of this stuff because no one will believe you. So I set it on the trash can. I'm all, oh, man, you ain't going to get me, you know. And I put it in the trash can. I'm like, yeah, you know. And I get in the car, and my son's like, Dad, was that cocaine? <laughs> and I was like, no, son. It was worse, right? For me, it was meth. And so we had to pray about that whole deal. But it was just to, to me in my mind, I thought, you sneaky dude. You, you already know that, 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 that when you said it was finished in my life, it was finished. I have no taste left in my mouth for it and haven't in years. 
And so you're going to catch me on the cool while I'm out of town. Listen, I didn't have to go to the bank and explain to my wife where the money went. I didn't have to call nobody and say, hey, don't tell nobody. All I had to do is pick it up. You see how the devil worked? He said, man, boy, that was the easiest sin I could have got into right there. And that's how he wants it. He wants it real easy for you. Pave the road right to it. It almost looked like it was, well, I won't say that. But that's just how he works. And we got to go back to knowing who we really are, folks. I'm telling you, if, if you're not struggling now, you know somebody's struggling. And this thing is serious. Think about those, think about those times where you know that if a certain person you love would just break free from this one thing, that you know everything in their life will change thereafter. That you know that in your heart and you see that. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, if, I promise you this. If you are willing to deal with it, God will take it from you. If you are willing to deal with it, he will take it from you. That, uh, that verse about life and life abundantly. I know that for men and women of God that really devote themselves to the Lord and, and that see to it that things are not in the way of, of, of them and, and God, you, you begin to see blessings in, in their lives in different areas. You know, whether it's with their children, their finances, their marriage. And listen, I'm not saying that, that you break free from a stronghold and everything's peachy, right? I'm just saying, if that's what's holding you back, break out of it, right? Believe what the Word says. I mean, it's like the greatest weapon in the world. If Going back to that verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, when it says we don't wage war as the world does, right? That we have, we have spiritual weapons with divine power to what? Demolish, right? Strongholds. To demolish them, not push them away a little bit further, not move them over to the side, but to demolish them. And if we would just believe that, that what the word says about our situation, I'm telling you, we would come out victorious every single time. That there would be nothing that could come against us and hold us back from the blessing of God on our lives if we would just simply believe what his word says about our situation. Isaiah 54, 17, we'll read the first part. You know, the, where it says no weapon formed against you will prosper, right? Listen, when you hold your position, you have to be reminded, listen, this is God speaking way back in Old Testament days, and he's telling his people at that moment in context, I gave you the victory, now, if you'll just stand where I said stand, anybody who forms uh, evil against you will not prosper. And I'm telling you right now today, if you would just believe that once you are broken free from that stronghold and hold your position as the man or woman of God, like you're supposed to, that it will not overtake you again as long as you believe. Amen? Man. And remember... Anytime temptation comes, what does God do? He always provides a way out. We can literally hold our ground, stand on it, and receive everything God has by just simply trusting his word, by knowing here it comes at me again, but no, 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 it has no power over me. Yeah, that might feel good to my flesh. It might satisfy some thoughts, but it will not be the blessing of God. We have to remind ourselves, church. Maybe my ring or something. Would y'all stand up with me for a minute?
Would y'all bow your heads for a minute, close your eyes. I want to just do something real quick. Just want to, in, in a minute, we're going to have a little bit of altar time, but uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just wanted to encourage everybody just to think for a second. I want you to think about that thing that's in the way. That, that, that one stronghold that keeps hindering you from getting everything God said that you would get. I want you to think about that. I want, I, I want you to know that, that there is a power greater than its power. And that same power lives within you. In a minute, we're going to open the altar up. And I really, really just want to pray specifically for... For anybody, I'm going to come off the stage here, and I just want to, I hope y'all believe in prayer and uh, the power of prayer. And so if you're struggling with something that you need broken free from, I just want to pray with you today before you leave. Uh, if, if, listen, and, and if, if it's not something that you're struggling with, let me be very specific on this. If, if you have a loved one that you know is struggling right now with something, I just want to, we want the, the altar team to pray specifically over that person and believe God for that situation. And so we'll take a moment and we'll pray for those needs. And let me remind you guys that there really is power in Christ, power in his spirit, and that there's nothing Nothing that can overcome his love for you. Remember, church, you're not alone. This isn't some thing that no one else has had to deal with. This is no struggle that has not been seen yet. But if you're feeling alone or helpless in that situation, held back or paralyzed, I pray you take one moment before you walk out. Let someone pray for you. In Jesus' name.